Police cars have always intrigued me. As somewhat of a logical thinking kid, I always just assumed a cop car had to be special. It had to be tough and it ought to be fast because a police car had to catch the bad guys and bad guys could have fast cars. Growing up in Chicago in the 80s meant that I'm not supposed to order a hot dog with ketchup, even though I do, and that I was quickly introduced to the Blues Brothers who ultimately confirmed my suspicion that cop cars weren't just regular cars. It's got a cop motor, a 440 cubic inch plant. It's got cop tires, cop suspension, cop shocks. It was a model made before catalytic converters, so it'll run good on regular gas. Fast forward a few years, when I was 12, the movie Black Sheep came out featuring a black and white Caprice 9C1 that Chris Farley said had a, a 426 Hemi in her, three quarter cams, nitro boosters. I can get her up to as good as 155. Never do, though, of course, unless I'm chasing a cute chick in a Ferrari. <laughs> And even though now I question the scriptwriter's choice for the Caprice's mod list, I don't think I've ever seen a Mopar engine in a Chevy, the seeds were planted. I've always wanted a really fast black and white cop car, and a few years back when they announced some police departments were basically getting a long wheelbase 5th gen Camaro slash Pontiac G8 with a 6 liter LS and a beefy 6L80E transmission, I was all in. And today, the little kid in me is ecstatic to introduce my my very own 2012 Chevy Caprice Police Patrol Vehicle, or PPV, which I'm naming the Legit Pursuit Vehicle, or LPV. Now I know what you're thinking, Alex, most cop cars are beaten down both mechanically and cosmetically. Yes, you are correct, most of these cars take quite the thrashing and don't look nearly this good, but my 2012 Caprice PPV is from Florida, and after 82,000 miles, it actually looks pretty decent. There's no rust, the body's in okay shape, but I couldn't say the same for the paint. And being as how I live in snowy and salty Chicago, the first thing I wanted to do to my Caprice was protect it. So I spent a day cleaning up the paint just a little bit and ceramic coating practically the entire car. My first step was with the good old clay mitt and some clay lubricant. This is just like using a clay bar, but much faster. The mitt pulls years of built up dirt and debris out of the clear coat, leaving you a super smooth finish. I went around the whole car with the mitt and this took about 30 minutes. Next was spraying the car down with a 50-50 mix of water and 70% isopropyl alcohol. This removes waxes or oil from the surface in preparation for this stuff. This is the Armor Shield 9 ceramic coating kit from Avalon King. I've used this for a couple years now on projects like the 40 MPG EcoVet and my 1000 horsepower Turbo Trans Am WS6 and I love it because of just how easy it is to apply. Just simply wrap the supplied cloth around the applicator pad from the kit, prime the cloth with a few drops of the ceramic coating, and wipe it on. Work in about a 2x2 two two section at a time, let it dry for a minute, and wipe it away. A ceramic coating fills the pores of your clear coat or any exterior surface and creates an invisible shield that protects your car from everyday use for years, no more waxing. This leaves a deep glossy finish on anything it touches and it's very hydrophobic so dirt and water just bead right off keeping your car cleaner in between washes. Best part is if you click on the link in the video description box and use my coupon code LEGIT25, you're going to receive $25 off making an entire kit with everything you need to coat an entire car only $45. Now if you've seen any of my other exterior detailing videos, you know I get carried away with this stuff and I just coat the whole car and just look at how awesome it makes the bumper guard look. It's basically brand new again. I also restored the faded black plastic cowl with the Armor Shield 9, oh, in about three minutes, and that turned out great as well. And then I applied it to the faded door handles, making them look original again, and I even coated the glass on the car, which makes water just bead off when it rains, so you don't need to use your wipers as much. I finished with the ceramic coating by protecting the headlight lenses so they don't yellow from the sun, and check out my new LED bulbs. These cars come with with normal halogen bulbs, but they have projectors inside the headlamp lenses, so an LED is a must. Lastly, I cleaned up the interior and she's ready to roll. All right guys, so the main plan for the Legit Pursuit vehicle is to modify its performance. So we're gonna make it faster, but I want it to look like a normal cop car, except we're probably gonna have some decently sized drag radials out back. I might add some lights back to the car just so it looks the part, but it's just a lot faster. Kind of like the Black Sheep 87 
seven Caprice. We might put nitrous on this car like they did. It's gonna be awesome. But another big goal for me in this video series is to raise some money for law enforcement. I've always had the greatest respect for the men and women who protect us. So I'm kicking this off with donating $500 to the Chicago Police Memorial Foundation and their Get Behind the Vest program. This is a program that provides our officers with the much needed bulletproof vests that they normally have to pay for out of pocket and these vests do need to be replaced every few years. So I'll leave a link down below if you wanna learn more about that. Oh, and Avalon King wants to help out too. So for every ceramic coating kit purchased with my legit 25 coupon code, they'll donate $5 to get behind the vest. But don't worry, you'll still get the kit for 45 bucks. Now let me get to showing you this car before we take it for a cruise. All right, so for those of you not too familiar, what you're looking at is a 2012 Chevy Caprice PPV. So these were brought to the United States from Australia. So this is a Holden uh, in 2011 up until about 2017, and they were not sold to civilians. So these were only sold to police departments. You could not buy these new if you weren't a police department. But now that they're being retired, we can pick them up used. And yes, this is still the fastest production police car ever brought to the United States. It will do 155 miles an hour. Uh, so it's not the quickest to 60, it's the fastest top speed in the US. So the crazy Lamborghinis and R8s in Dubai, that does not count. These were mass produced. I think they made roughly about 17,000 of these for US police departments all around the country. So the reason why the Caprice PPV is so fast is because it's basically a stretched Pontiac G8 and it's built on the same platform that cars like the fifth generation Camaro are built on, the Zeta platform. So these cars share a ton with each other. And in Australia, this is called the Holden Statesman. And they actually have a Holden Caprice as well, which is the same car, just a little bit higher up trim level. Uh, so this car being built specifically for police departments comes with bigger brakes and upgraded suspension. It has a cooler for practically everything and special tires. They say justice on this one and pursuit on this one. We got a little mix and match on the tires on this car. Uh, but from what I understand, these are special tires for the police units. Now the drivetrain that this car comes with is what really makes it such an amazing value. I think this is the cheapest way to get into a modern LS vehicle with a really rock solid transmission and rear end. What you're looking at here is an L77. So this is a six liter engine. It's a derivative of the LS2, but it does have displacement on demand and it is capable of running on E85. 355 horsepower and about 380 something pound feet of torque. So you can kind of think of this as like a little bit of a detuned LS2. Now, what I like is it has the 6L80 transmission. So this is a very rock solid transmission and the differential comes straight out of the fifth generation Camaro, which is pretty stout in itself. But I believe that you can swap the second generation CTS V diff into this car. And those are pretty much bulletproof. Now I've actually seen some videos online where people are debating whether or not this is an LS. It's ridiculous because it's called an L77. They're like, it's not technically an LS. Guys, this looks exactly like an LS. Smells like an LS. And most importantly, you can stick a gigantic cam in this thing, put some headers on it and a tune, and you're looking at about 500 rear wheel horsepower. So that definitely makes it an LS. Everything swaps over from all the other LS series engines. Uh, it just has the active fuel management, the E85 capability, uh, displacement on demand where it turns into a four cylinder. That's pretty much all it is. The G8 had an L76, I believe, and the Camaros had an LS3 and an L99. And you don't hear anybody telling you that an automatic fifth generation Camaro doesn't have an LS in it. So my plans for this car are pretty simple. If you guys follow the channel, you know that I've tuned my own nine second turbo Trans Am. I've had my 2001 WS6 for like 16, 17 years. So I'm very familiar with the LS platform. And I think I'm gonna take the route that most do when they get a stock LS car. And I'm gonna start off with a big cam, headers, a torque converter, and a tune, and a sticky 
Yankee tire out back and I want to see how fast we can go naturally aspirated. Now I also have a nitrous kit at home so that might make its way into this car as well. Uh, but I want to max this out with the stock rear end with the stock transmission outside of a converter and a totally stock engine except for a cam and maybe we might send the heads out to get ported but these heads and this intake manifold are really decent. They flow really well especially if your goal is only about 500 wheel horsepower. All right, so you guys have probably already commented that we have a gap here, right there, and a new headlight. Yep, I saw that too. Most of these cop cars have been in some kind of accident uh, in one way or another. This does have a clean title and all that stuff, but on the Carfax, it does say that it was uh, in a minor accident, no airbags deployed or anything. Uh, I did a really good inspection here. There is no actual damage. I think this was literally just a fender bender. Uh, so they probably put a new fender on there, maybe a bumper cover, obviously the headlight and painted it. And I'm not sure if this little guard here is new because it is in like mint condition. There are no rock chips whatsoever. Uh, and I think they probably painted the hood as well. So to be honest with you, I am all about this minor accident because it's one of the big reasons why my particular car just looks so good. Okay, so a lot of these Caprice PPVs were 9C1 variants, and then they had a 9C3. And the difference here is the 9C3 is more of a detective car. So it's always gonna be uh, one paint color, or at least most of them. And it's gonna have an actual interior. So there was never a cage in a 9C3. Uh, it's, it's got more features and options. It's just kind of like a normal uh, car. It's actually a really, really nice car, but obviously they demand more money. But I didn't want that. I wanted a 9C1. This is a stripped out car that actually had a prisoner cell cage in the back, and we still have the prisoner plastic seats, and they're in excellent condition. Now, the police department, when they decommission these cars, they basically cut anything out of it that has anything to do with their department. So for some reason, they cut the seat belts out of here. I still have that part right there, so I can still get a seat belt and snap it right in, which I'm gonna do. My kids are dying to get their kids' seats back here and go for a ride. Uh, but you can tell here, we have no carpeting. It is just plastic or rubber on the uh, floor. And you can tell in here, where they cut some wires that were leading uh, into the center council. This is where the cage would have bolted in. I'm pretty sure that was removed and it has fixed windows uh, with no real door panel. So there's no switch there or anything, no handle, nothing. So people definitely cannot escape the back of one of these caprices. Uh, up front though is quite comfortable and actually does have um, some pretty neat features. So these cars had special seats built for them to accommodate a duty belt. So if an off Officer had their duty belt on with their gun and ammunition and whatnot they could fit in this seat and be comfortable and it was made of a material uh, that was much stronger than a normal civilian car that has a cloth type of uh, interior so as you can tell 82,000 miles this looks pretty decent uh, most of the old Crown Vicks and everything are just completely torn up uh, so we don't have a traditional center console I got my coffee right here I gotta put some cup holders in here uh, but what they had here was most likely some switches and some outlets and whatnot uh, maybe a little cover or something. Here's kind of where you would rest your elbow. And this is the mount for the officer's computer, which I think I'm going to find a mount and mount my uh, my laptop that I tune with, uh, with HP tuners right here. I think that'll be pretty cool. Uh, and then this does have a shifter on the floor. The later versions went to the column and we do have uh, pretty decent climate control. This is actually a touchscreen stereo. Uh, and the interior on this car, you can see here we have 82,000 miles. Uh, the interior is really nice. The steering wheel is not all mangled. Uh, there's really nothing wrong with the interior. This is where they'd hang up their microphone. Um, but yeah, as far as the interior on this car, I will definitely get some switches going on right here and some cup holders. Uh, but the only thing this really needs is a headliner. So a lot of cars in Arizona and that are from Florida and hot weather climates um, are going to have a sagging headliner, unfortunately. So uh, I'm going to try and fix this. I don't know. The headliner from a car that's built in Australia is really, really expensive. All right. If I hold this and start the car. We should get a special menu that pops up. All right, here we go. So I don't know guys, if you uh, know of these cars in Australia or you own one of these here in the States, um, do all of these have this? So you can pretty much see everything in here. Um, you have current gear, active fuel management, throttle position, trans temperature, 
And then check out this weird self-test. It just goes crazy. And it'll keep on doing this while you hold it. And, uh, yeah, I don't really know when it stops. Hold on. Oh, there we go. <laughs> you press it again. What's weird is you can't see oil pressure, which is kind of odd, but uh, I'm not really too worried about that. Listen to this engine. It's so quiet, it runs perfectly. No weird ticking noises, no leaks. Uh, the accessories are all spinning without making any bearing noises or anything like that. I'm just very, very impressed with the condition of this engine. And that was one of the big reasons why I bought this thing. Now I know you're thinking, Alex, it only has 82,000 miles. That's really not that many. Well, check this out. All right, let's go through the menu. Trap speed. I'm not totally sure what that is. It's something to do with the fact that it's a police car. Let me know in the comment section. Um, but let me show you guys how many hours this has. Look at this. This has to be a record. It has 11,000 total run hours. So that means the engine's been on for 11,000 hours and it's been idling for 8,300 hours. Okay, that is completely nuts. So I'm not exactly sure what department this car came from, um, but whatever the case may be, whoever the officer was that was using this vehicle basically just sat and idled forever so when you're looking for one of these police vehicles you want those hours to be much lower like it'd be normal if they were like three to five thousand uh, idle hours or even total run hours some of them are even lower than that it just really depends on the department so what i'm thinking is maybe it was a state trooper and he sat on the road in florida with the ac blasting obviously you need to do that pull someone over and then go right back to idling or he was on like an airport duty just kind of putzing around an airport uh, one of my friends had mentioned that maybe this vehicle was used in some kind of security detail where again they're just idling around and it's florida so it's always hot so very very high idle hours uh, i don't think the first year caprice even showed that and a lot of the crown vicks i think before 06 didn't even show that most people don't pay any attention to idle hours obviously it, it would just be wear primarily on the engine and accessories uh, but it is something important to look at. For me, once I saw that, I did take it into consideration, but after seeing the Carfax and seeing that they changed the oil like every couple thousand miles uh, and seeing how well it ran and drove and the condition of the body, to me, I still think it was worth it. But for you guys, definitely look at the runtime and use it when you're negotiating for a better price. Okay, so then a couple other interesting features in the car. We have these buttons here. This is a performance shift button for the transmission, uh, and this puts it into performance uh, traction control mode and you can fully turn it off as well so check this out so we're in sport shift mode and this makes it shift quicker and it downshifts a lot quicker as well and then we hit this once and we're in performance mode which basically turns off uh, some of the nannies lets you kind of get a little more sideways uh, but it's not fully off until you hold it down for about five seconds and then you can turn this off completely and there you have it. Now, as you guys probably noticed, it's a massive car. So I have uh, these seats back quite a bit and look at the amount of room. Now, granted, you don't have a big cushion here, but I've seen the detective units and it is huge back here. This trunk has got to be one of the largest I've ever seen on a normal four door sedan. And this fits a police department really well because they can put some really, really long weapons in the back of this trunk and a lot of them. All right, so I've been driving the Caprice uh, for the last three or four days. <laughs> and it is an absolute blast. You have such good control over this car. The upgraded suspension and braking really shows. And if you put it in that performance mode where you still get a little bit of traction control, uh, you can have fun and it's pretty safe and controlled. And the sport transmission mode is pretty awesome as well. It shifts a lot quicker. It downshifts a lot quicker. Uh, and I, I'm not sure, but I think it disengages the lockup torque converter on the highway, uh, which would also help kick down faster since it doesn't have to release the converter. So anyway, if you guys have driven uh, a Pontiac G8 or even a fifth generation Camaro because they share the same platform, it kind of feels like that. This is a longer, heavier car, 
but I think because it has the upgraded cop brakes, cop suspension, <laughs> and all that good stuff, that it, it's almost like a level playing field. It handles really well. I mean, it's it's not a, a race car, it's not a sports car by any means, uh, but you'd be surprised with how well this handles for being such a gigantic car. I mean, this, this car reminds me of stuff that they made back in the day, like in the 60s. It's just huge. Uh, so anyway, driving it around just feels like an LS car because that's what it is. Uh, so I really like the different modes that you can select. I think that's a pretty cool feature. And one thing though, I must say is it is so, so quiet. Uh, this thing has the totally stock normal exhaust and it's ridiculously quiet, but hang on. Yes, it's quick. It's quick guys. It's not super fast. But, uh, but I like it. I think zero to 60 was roughly six seconds, but like any LS car, you can mod it like crazy. If you want, you can put a blower on this thing, you can turbo it, and the engine will hold up uh, to a certain point. Uh, another mod that I think is a must on one of these cars is an exhaust system. This thing is just so, so quiet. Here's a clip of what she sounds like from behind. All right, guys, we are almost back at home base. <laughs> I'm gonna have so much more fun with this car. Uh, so anyway, let's lift the Caprice up in the air and see what a Florida car looks like from underneath. All right, so check this out. I bought this Caprice at 82,400 miles and according to the Carfax, at 82,200 miles, they put a bunch of money into this car. So we have brand new pads and rotors in the front and look at how gigantic these rotors are. These brakes are unbelievable. AC Delco pads, they used all factory parts from what it looks like. Uh, we have two brand new hub assemblies in the front. We have two new engine mounts, which we're gonna take a look at here in a minute. Uh, we have two new tires. The rear tires aren't in the best of condition, but that is totally fine because we're putting a drag radial back there anyway. Uh, we have brand new rear pads and rotors as well. And then something that I am so excited about is checking out the underbody of this car. I live in Chicago. We use a lot of rock salt on the road. Our cars kind of look like garbage just after a few years. So I am not used to something this clean. We pay a premium out here for a car like this and it's gonna be an absolute breeze to work on. I'm used to nuts and bolts like this just being a big glob of rust. So this is really, really cool. So let's take a look at this thing together. It looks like the exhaust is probably a Original. It looks great. It's totally intact. Uh, here we do have to replace exhaust every once in a while because it just rusts out. Uh, so now we're getting to the back of the transmission. So this has flex discs similar to the Mercedes. They're rubber right here. And that looks to be in pretty good shape. No leaks at all from this transmission. It looks to be bone dry. Uh, what else do we have going on? AC Delco oil filter, of course. Uh, I don't think they cleaned up the area after the last oil change. I don't think this is an actual leak. We have a pretty big engine oil cooler right here as well. Uh, let's see, here are the new engine mounts. You can see a fresh sticker on that one. So that's cool. And let's see, coming up to the rack, the later one's got electric power steering. We just have traditional power steering, which I actually like even better. It's very, very responsive on this car. No leaks whatsoever. This looks so, so good. I'll take a look at the suspension here in a moment as far as it having any play, but just driving around, we have no noises whatsoever. I don't suspect any issues at all. Probably newer sway bar links, those always go bad. Uh, doesn't look like anything was damaged on the bottom of the subframe. We have our plastic shield is intact. Everything looks nice and factory and just very, very well maintained. We have a newer AC compressor according to the Carfax as well. Uh, but yeah, overall guys, this is fantastic. I mean, $7,500 and you have this amazing power plant and drivetrain uh, on a car that was very, very well maintained. Now you guys saw the crazy amount of run hours on this engine. So what I'm gonna do is call the shops on the Carfax that maintain this vehicle. There were a couple of them and I'm gonna find out if anything's been done to the engine it only has 82,000 miles but a lot of idling time and these with the displacement on demand they did have lifter failure issues so I'm wondering if at the very least has had a cam and lifters put in it maybe this is a newer engine I'm not sure but it sounds so good and it runs so well 
it's just, for the amount of hours it has, it's just a little odd to me. These 6L80s are pretty rock solid and this thing shifts absolutely perfectly. But just take a look at the underbody. If you guys are from my area or an area where they use rock salt, just look at how nice and pretty this is. I'm not sure if this is factory, but they have some kind of undercoating going on here as well. But anyway, I can't wait to rip into this car. We're doing the long tube headers, the exhaust, and a bunch of other stuff, and I feel like everything's just gonna come apart like butter. That'll do it for today's video. I hope you guys love the new car. I'm super excited about it. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, at Legit Streetcars. I'm gonna be posting a bunch of pictures of this thing all around the city of Chicago. So don't forget, Check out Avalon King down below. Get yourself some ceramic coating. If you want to learn more about the Chicago Police Memorial Foundation, that link will be down there as well. So if you like this video, don't forget, hit that like button, share the video, subscribe if you're new, and most importantly, have an awesome day. I'll catch all of you in the next video. Mm -hmm.